All right, this is Gary's Mod Tutorial 6. I'm going to pick up right where I left off. And as I said, this is number 6. If you haven't watched any other ones, please go back to number 1 and start from there. These are going to be very simple tutorials, though, and only showing the very basics of Gary's Mod. All right, so we were just kind of going over Advanced Dupe 2. A um, couple things I want to show you. Um, these options are all very, very useful. So the um, first thing is spawn or paste at original position. If you click that, oh, where'd my thing go? What it's going to do is it will um, want to place that, whatever it is, in the location that you copied it in, which was, oh, wait. Oh, never mind. I didn't even make this on this map. I made it on a different map. And it's very map dependent. So if you make it on a certain map and you say paste an original location, it could potentially could be in a totally different place. Like, I don't even know where that's at. So I'm going to unclick that. And there's my dome again. Um, paste with constraints, so that's these constraints here. So if you don't want the welds and everything that it has, you can click that and it won't have the constraints. If you obviously do want them, keep it clicked. Um, paste with parenting, that has to do with this tool, um, which is a little bit more advanced. I'll get to that in a little bit and then we can understand what that means. Um, unfreeze after paste, that means after it pastes in, it'll unfreeze it, which I won't do with this because that'll be flip and laggy. Um, preserve frozen state after paste. So that means if it was fr whatever parts were frozen with, you know, frozen as in you pick it up and freeze it in spot, whatever the, uh, props in the contraption were frozen when you copied it, it'll preserve that same state, um, which is it's really useful to keep that, have that um, clicked. Uh, uh, area copy constrained props outside of box. What that means is if you're area copying with this Say I area copied that little cube there with area copy if that cube was constrained to You know something else outside of that box of This box Then that's what that would mean. It would try to preserve or I mean uh, area copy that prop as well which is very useful so if you had a, you know a very large area that doesn't even fit into this box then you can do that you can also change the size of this box by doing area copy size and see how it goes up and down like that um yeah um then world area copy only your own props yeah that's uh so if you're on a server with a lot of other people and you want to go area copy something but someone has something else next to your stuff so like Say this is Billy Bob Johansson's prop, and you didn't want to copy that. Just make sure that that's tick, and it won't copy it. Um, and yeah, that's all those. And then these are um, the offsets. So say you have, you know, you, this little cube or whatever. You can still see what I have. You can change it how high it spawns. So if I set it to something higher, you see that that little cube is much higher up now. was way down here so that's what that does and then that's what pretty much all of these do they'll change the pitch the yaw the roll um, use world angles things like that um, dupe information that just tells you the info of who it was there's me when I uh, copied it um, the time size all that stuff like that um, this is a contraption spawner honestly it's never really used much because it's generally always turned off you can't really use it um, if you do want to look into it or whatever. I'm sure you can find some info online. Um, area autosave, I've never honestly ever used, but I imagine it would be pretty useful. Um, if you do an area or whatever, it'll keep safe from that. It'll keep over, either overriding or um, whatever the settings you set it to. So every 10 minutes, what directory, things like that. Um, and these I'm not gonna deal with because I've never messed with either of these and I honestly didn't even know you can save a map with Advanced Dupe 2. <laughs> anyway, then Advanced Dupe 1 is a little bit simpler. You just find what you need. Uh, I don't know, we'll just save this. And click open. Uh, well, apparently it's having errors. Okay, never mind then. I won't use that. Anyway, it's pretty much the exact same. So, that's Advanced Duplicators. They're kind of complicated. That's why I kind of spent some time on them. Um, but they're very, very useful. And just a side note... These, so Advanced Duplicator 2, will save to your game, to your client, to your computer. 
Um, this will save to the server. So if you're playing single player, you're fine. It'll save to your computer. If you're playing on a server, it'll save to that server, and then you have to go through the upload folder manager, or the open folder manager, anyway, and then um, move the files accordingly to your game or whatever. So that's why I don't recommend, really, for one. Try to use just number two. It's a lot easier. Uh, and these also only save as a text file on your computer, so it's very simple. Oh, okay. So now that that one's over, what's next? What's next? Um, thruster. Thruster's very, very useful. Oh, are you kidding me? It's going to keep saying ghosting. Hold on. Let me see if I can't fix that. There we go. Okay. So, thruster. Let's say we get a a good size little prop here. And let's go ahead and do a clip. Um, uh, let's see. It's pretty simple if you just think of it as like a rocket, really. Thruster, rocket, some kind of idea. Um, you have two keys, your forward and your reverse. I have a numpad one, number two. Um, your force is how strong. Um, the effect and the sound is just, you know, what it, um, the sound is obviously what it sounds like when it turns on, and the effect is just kind of like a, uh, a visual thing. So you can either have it flames or whatever. I'm going to turn this off because honestly it's really flipping loud, and I'll probably ear rape you. I don't want that! Um, and then you can either have it toggle on and off, so you have to hit the button more than once. So you hit it once, it turns on, stays on, hit it again, it'll turn off. Uh, collide with attached object, which I don't recommend. That means when you put it on there, it will still want to like push onto the object in a weird way. I recommend not having that. And activate when damaged. That's if like you were to shoot it, it will turn on, which is kind of useful sometimes, but I really ever use it. And then the model of what it looks like. So you can either have one of those, or that one doesn't even show, or that big thruster thingy. Um, but usually it's this one that people would use. I'm just going to click it and turn it on. <laughs> so if you can see there, it's got the flame effect and it's pushing it like crazy and it's just going all over. Um, try to keep in mind that when you place one like here and then place one here, you realize that that's negating each other. That means that this force is canceling out a lot of this force. It will still move, generally, but you can get a lot better of effect by just placing it in a more efficient spot, and it'll move a lot better. So keep that in mind. And uh, something, this is a pro tip for you guys out there that, you know, may still be watching this and just kind of like, oh, this is all you use stuff. This is something you might not know. Um, and we'll get, actually, that'll be the next tool to teach. Um, if you put a thruster on something and say, this prop is actually really, really freaking huge, and it's really heavy. Ah, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead. And I turn it on. It just doesn't do anything. Um, thrusters work relative to the weight that they are to the thing that they're attached to. So this one's obviously really, really heavy. That's what this weight tool does. It changes the weight, and also could you see the weight of the object? If they're both relative same weight, that... Well, shit. Usually, it'll work, but I think the higher weight you go, the less relative. Huh. Anyway, basically, and now it's freaking out. If you up the weight of the thruster, so, in other words, if this was set to, you know, 900 or whatever, and generally the thrusters are set to 1, doesn't like to push against it very much, but if you bump that weight up just a little bit, and I'm talking like that much, I generally set them to 20 if it needs to be heavier. It does a lot more. See that? It didn't do anything, and now it is doing something. So it's, I don't know how it works. I think it's, um, if you know what it means by saying it's a curve, it doesn't work uh, quite linearly. It's a curvature, so um, relative to the weight. But anyway, Generally, uh, the more the thruster weighs, the more it'll push. So anyway, that's kind of a more pro tip. But anyway, back to a thruster. Let's see if it, well, no, I went over everything. Anyway, so the weight tool, what I was just using there to kind of demonstrate that, 
it's just simple. You set the weight you want it to, you click, and it changes it. Um, you can uh, hit reload, so the R button, and it'll change it back to one or to its original. And yeah, it, that's pretty simple. And then tooltip scale is just how big it is. See, it kind of went smaller. And then bigger, smaller, yeah. You can see that, I'm sure. Um, a little other tip, when it comes to a lot of these tools, so say if you have these welded together, but you don't want to hit Z to undo it because you've got other things that it'll undo or whatever. So you've got, you know, a couple other props over here. And if you hit Z, it'll undo this prop and then that prop and then that weld. Um, you can remove a lot of constraints by pulling up the tool and hitting R on that. It'll remove all constraints to this prop, whatever prop you click. So that weld is no longer there. So keep that in mind with a lot of these tools that work that way. Um, let's see, let's see. You know, I'm running out of time here. I realized uh, it's getting a little, a little long. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, end it there. And we'll see you guys in the next one.